Welcome back to We Are Live. Big thanks to everybody for tuning in for the first hour. We're at Midcoast Studio in Grand Center. Pleased to be rejoined after a couple weeks off by the great Dr. Edmund Yako. Proprietor, Hillside Animal Hospital. We play dogs on film. We shoot the breeze. We hear about his world travels, which recently included a trip to the Cleveland area. Hello, Dr. Ed. Good to have you back. Good. Yeah, thanks to be... Good to be back. I, something's been missing from my life for the last couple of weeks. Nice. It's called Travis Terrell. It's yes. like a, it's you know? like a weird like uh, when you have a viral infection and then you, hey. but you have it for like three months and then you get clear of it and you're like, my lungs are raw and feel weird. This That's is what my strange. doctor said. I had a Travis deficiency. Oh, oh look at that. Oh. He went in right into it. Uh, <laughs> Doctor Ed, again, you can check out Hillside Animal Hospital online, hillsideanimalhospital.net. They can take care of your pets just like they take care of ours and uh, all the great people we've recommended uh, to Hillside. And a big shout out to Gateway Pet Guardians who uh, t- begrudgingly hosted Travis at their uh, hey. soiree for strays recently because of Doctor Ed's uh, kindness having that. So. I was upset that Travis made it back from that. I thought that maybe they'd keep him over there. Well, I, I thought maybe they'd keep him until he gave a donation. Ah, you that, know, but he'd still be there. Uh, yeah, I almost misunderstood how auctions work. Mm. I just feel like... like oh, I like that. And I grabbed it, yeah. and I was like, sir, you can't take that home. Mm-hmm. You didn't win it. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh. It's not I a good thing. I just it was just... It's a, it's a charity event, right. and I thought you guys were fe- feeling I, charitable. I told everybody to keep waving at Travis every, you know, during the auction, <laughs> right. you know, so maybe he would wave back. <laughs> like, oh, hey, I got my number. I'm waving with my number. Mm. Um, and but I did not bid on anything, Chris. Um, but I did not even some dignity. Oh, there wasn't much of that left anyway to begin with. But I, mm. I did partake in those delicious Swedish meatballs that they had. My word, are those they from very from good. IKEA? The, the the shoppers that get yeah, lost oh, that man, they turn that into the meatballs. Good, man, it was delicious. Okay. Oh, so good. So if you can like give me the number of the caterer, that'd be great. That was so good. Okay, we'll make that happen. Uh, Dr. Ed, why were you uh, in Cleveland, or what did you do while you were there that would uh, be worth noting to two media moguls like ourselves? Well, you, there's two questions there, so I'll answer the first one. There Thank you. you. Yeah, Nina had a back-to-back weekend uh, of field hockey in Ohio, so rather than travel back and forth four times, I stayed in Ohio <laughs> for the week. Wild. Oh, smart. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, since I was driving by myself, and mm-hmm. then uh, I stayed with a friend, another veterinarian friend in Columbus, and visited his practice, which was really cool. Oh, uh, uh, okay. I'd love to tell you about that, what he does there. Interesting. Yeah, we'll have to hear about that. Yeah, but I uh, took a day off, and I drove up to Cleveland to see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Interesting. How yeah, was okay. that? I've heard people you rave pro- about it. Did you protest the hip hop acts being put? Hey, in? hey, hey, hey. That's hey, what hey, I would have done. Hey, personally. Like, where's Ja Rule? Why is he in this? <laughs> <laughs> it's been on my life list ever since it opened, and I just had to go, and boy, I'm so glad I did. How much time did you spend there? Like four and a half hours. Jeez, so you basically... <laughs> I, I did. I, 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 I read every exhibit. <laughs> I watched every video, and yeah, and they have, they have an interac- interactive area, which is really cool. You can uh, pick up a guitar, our keyboards, our drums. And you have a choice of three songs you can play along with. Shut up! That's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, keyboard and drum, keyboard and uh, and um, guitar, I suck at. But uh, drums, man, they put you in this little soundproof booth. So I got to play drums along with Queen on "We Will Rock You." Okay, now that's yeah. pretty. Cool. I mean, I was rocking it out. <laughs> oh, that is so. Yeah, the trouble is, I mean, I was there by myself, so I didn't have anybody to video. Film it. Oh, oh man, man right. you're in that soundproof booth, and you can just go crazy. You just protect. That is the so whole cool. Time. Yeah, it really is. It really that would is. be the problem. If I go in, I'd have. If I'd had like a couple drinks or something, I'd go in. I'd be wailing away, doing everything. I'd be asked to leave. Well, then they then they have another group. They have some actual musicians there. And you can pl- you can get in there and you can play with them and they'll oh film, wow they'll film you and you can play you know whatever to your level is and you know a keyboardist a drummer you can do whatever you want and whoever you know if if you have multiple friends they can get in there too so you can do actually do that with an actual band and actually play a song so that's wait, really dope so in the like food areas the rock and roll hall of fame do they have like the the black sabbath the chicken sandwich and stuff like that how does yeah, that work they do of course yeah, yeah. they do <laughs> They do. <laughs> was there a particular artist uh, or a group uh, that you discovered something new about that maybe you didn't know beforehand? That's my yeah, favorite thing I about did. going to the museum. It's like, I didn't realize they did X. And you feel well, silly now considering we have computers in our pockets. Right. I've never cared to I, I wear actually that. did. It's funny you mentioned that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Talking Heads. Oh, okay. And they have an Dr. area. Ed. Yeah, it, they have an area where you can watch every single induction ceremony from every, from every artist. Oh, nice. Yeah, and you can watch the video of the, and, you know, and the speeches. I never knew there was a woman in the band. 
Couldn't have told you that much. Yeah, I, I couldn't I, have told you. Yeah, that. I, I mean, I, obviously, I knew the lead singer, but I, I really didn't know the, the rest of the group. And, so uh, it's not the same uh, as it ever was. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> oh boy. Jesus Christ. Man. Jesus. Do you guys want me to head out? You could he he would have dropped the mic, but it cost too much. <laughs> 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 For us, yeah, that's that's true. But <laughs> well, that's pretty well, dope. I'm gonna go check it that down out. the house. You know. It's oh my. He gets off the hook. You don't get to grill him, Gardner. Yeah, I'm looking away. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. Uh, I was just looking away. That's hilarious. I was off the screen. I was minding my own business. All right. Well, <laughs> here's looking. another thing, that really cool thing. They have yes. this little kiosk where you can, you can make up your own band name and then design a little adhesive sticker. Uh-huh. Okay. And then print out, print out a couple copies of it. Okay. All right. What'd so you go what, with? Well, tell me, what would your band name be? <sighs> Front Porch District Lemonade. Wow. That's a jam band, if I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, I have the perfect one. Travis, think about it. I have the perfect genius? one because I almost... Evil Genius? Stable Genius? Stable? Stable Genius. <laughs> That's like a smart horse or what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. Oh, man. I don't know. Now being put on the spot about coming up with a band name, I'm... I don't know. I, I, th this intrigues me. What did? Yeah. You, what did well, you, I, I did. A, I did a bunch of them, and I mean, I made, some for, I made some for my friends. Mm -hmm. and, what, uh, which one did you end up? What, oh, what were some me? of them? Yeah. Oh, for me, I did. Uh, um, leave the gun, take the cannoli. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay. That's a good ass band name. Leave the cat, take the cannoli. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> That's what he should have. Leave the cat, take the cannoli. That's, That's uh, what his band name. I try been. not to get too, just because, just like it, just it doesn't serve me any purpose. But here's a tweet from yesterday that what I... What if I would have went with the ancient astronaut theorist? That's that amazing. Been, yeah. And then I would have, yeah. every at every show, I'd have went, say yes! We'd have a song called Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to quote tweet this yesterday, but I just like I just truly don't jump into the fray because it serves me no purpose. Uh, in all caps, presidential harassment. That would be a good punk That's band. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. That oh, would be well, a, certainly. a great yeah, punk band. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You uh, could probably I'll, come up with a number of Band names off, off that of just his tweets. Yes. Yeah. yeah, Al Chapino. I would go probably yeah. Al, Al Chapino. <laughs> I would be Al Chapino. Uh, hip hop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that would probably be my hip hop name. <laughs> Al Chapino. <laughs> Al Chapino. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great stage name. Oh, yeah. Al Chapino. I would buy the hell out of that album. Because <laughs> Al Chapino is good, man. That is a. Like, I'd be. This is good like, rap jazz. Sean, He's a good rap like a, jazzist. A Devo, a Devo type band. <laughs> Impeach around. <laughs> Impeach around. Oh uh, yeah. Sean yeah. has said that if he were a rapper, he'd be Sir Drinks a lot. So. Sir Drinks a lot. Okay. Yeah. That's just lazy. <laughs> that's, just, that's, just, that's explaining what you do. <laughs> no, when, he, when he's work, when he's working, he Sir Mix a lot. Yeah. Right, right. That's, yeah. uh, that's almost too on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> it's too real. What about uh, check out my podcast as a band name? Organic. Oh, yours would be organic growth. Organic, organic yeah. growth. Yeah. Yes. Do I have to be bluegrass if I'm organic growth? Ooh. Like, what do you need? Oh, be heavy that? metal. That's what oh, heavy metal. Okay, growth. like mathy, just yeah. real. Like yeah. I look look really intimidating but you find out i'm a molecular scientist or yes, something that's okay. exactly yeah. all right that's good all right any others you need to share with us that you created <laughs> the amputated dog legs <laughs> 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 the st louis skin condition yeah. like how, how also known work? as a lucky dog so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every, all the dogs with one ear two uh, two eyes that don't work dr. and, and not many teeth that it's, lucky. it's dr ed and the neutered <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> the uh, not my pit bulls. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. Uh, guys, we play dogs on film with Dr. Ed uh, each and every week. We've had some great replacements while you're out. Our friend Kendra Jones came in. Our friend Teresa Voss came in from Young Professionals at Gateway Pet Guardians. Uh, lots of uh, of things have happened in that time. I don't think did I win last week? I, I don't, don't recall. Know. I'll say I did. Um, yeah, Travis's look says mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Oh, Black Sheep wants you to start a band called the Wobbly Cats, by the way. The Wobbly Cats. The Wobbly mm -hmm. Cats. Oh, that's oh, a okay. band name. We got mm -hmm. some B-roll we could use for music <laughs> videos. Okay. We had a Wobbly Dog yesterday. Oh, oh no. Yeah, same, How'd that same go? Same kind of condition, yeah. No. Thanks a lot, that's Ripley. A lot. Do the uh -huh. do Wobbly animals like that tend to vomit more? Uh, no. Okay. No. All right. Mm -hmm. Might have trouble cleaning themselves from time to time. That'll <laughs> be an issue. <laughs> hmm. Air mailing. Kind of thick. Whoop. Whoop. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gardner, I don't know if we have a theme, but you can let us know how the game goes. Traps, will you do the introduction? <laughs> I will be more than happy to. Boys and girls, 
Dr. Ed, welcome back, because it's time for Dogs on Film! Did you go to Machu Picchu? I did. Maybe Machu, Machu Man Picchu. Something like that for a band name. That's not mm. bad. I'll, mm. I'll keep thought showering. Okay, I like you. leave the cat, take the cannoli still, since yeah. it's an actual little phrase you used. Right. So we'll keep working on it. Right that. now, I, li- I like the Chinese food place. The Chinese food place? Mm-hmm. That would be the name of it. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. That's interesting, because it feels like it would be better stated if no, maybe used definitely. a more classic no, term. Yeah. Definitely would be Chinese Especially food. in you your community. From that. Yeah. That yeah. Hmm. I do like Al Chapino, though. Al we'll Chapino. talk about Al okay. Chapino okay. here in a excellent. minute. Okay. Our, friend, our friend Sean, I should say now. Um, dogs on film. The key word is film. <laughs> Specifically <laughs> film. film. Dogs, not so much. It used to be. We ran out of dog movies for this game, though. Sometimes the movies we use now might have a dog in it. We don't really even know. Not even sure. Yeah, because that's not how we formulate it anymore. But... We have six total movies, three sets of movies. We have those pairs, and we pit one movie against another. You guys have to guess which one has a better score according to Rotten Tomatoes. And if you get it right, you get a point. Possible, total possible number of three points in the regular part of this game. Yes. Now, if we have a tie, we have a seventh movie where you don't have that against another. It's by itself. You have to guess closest to the actual score. Now, throughout, I might decide a group of you or a single person is right, and you'll hear this. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. Or you'll hear this if you're wrong. (laughs) Don't want that one. And uh, to help you out a little bit, too, uh, my friend Sean, our friend Sean, Mm -hmm. has uh, voiced some brief descriptions and maybe chit-chatted with me a little bit as well throughout. uh, Some descriptions of the movies, in case you haven't seen it, to kind of help you out in formulating your guess. Now, you mentioned themes. Sometimes we do a theme for the entire game. Sometimes the parents have their own theme. And this week we have its own theme with the parents. So I'll give you those here real quick, too. The first one will be... I can't remember what this theme is. Mm. Uh, oh, I think it's kidnapping. Oh, kidnapping. Okay. Oh, very dark, kidnapping involved dark in the first game. Interesting game. theme. Okay. Very right out the gate. Pretty the handy. second one... We go back to movies with car chases. Oh, I love a good car chase. I had so one this morning. What? Hmm? No comment. Were you involved? No comment. Was there one this morning? No, calm down, everyone. All right. Were there choppers? Ah, shh. Don't be a snitch. Don't, uh, be, ta- don't be a Takashi. Okay. And then the third one will be movies set on an island. Oh. Movies set on an island, and then we have our tiebreaker, which is just random. So those are what we have today. Are we ready? Let's get this started. Mm-mm. It's for my favorite group. Black Eyed Peas, who probably should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame here soon. Oh, you can you can you can vote for people. You can nominate people to be in the Hall of Fame. Oh well, now nah, I'm really? definitely making the yeah. trip to Cleveland Modest just to do melt. that. Mm. <sighs> okay. All right, here's your first movie. The first pairing, I believe, it had to do with kidnappings of some sort, or, <laughs> or no, rescue missions. I think it was rescue, rescue missions. missions. Okay. All right. Okay. So here we go with your first movie of Dogs on Film. Who's that on the phone? Urgent care, wanting their money. What'd you go to urgent care for? I don't remember. It was 2017. You don't remember? No, no clue. I just don't. I remember going there. Have you been drinking? No. It was, you know, 9 o'clock, 8, 7 o'clock in the morning I went. Had you been drinking? No. Already? First up, executive decision. 1996. Thriller action. 2 hours, 13 minutes. When terrorists hijack a plane traveling from Greece to Washington, D.C., U.S. Army Specialist David Grant, Kurt Russell, and Lieutenant Austin, Lieutenant Colonel Austin Travis, Steve Seagal, Steven Seagal, join forces to bring the plane to safety. While terrorists on board the plane claim that they hijacked the plane to force the U.S. government to release their leader, who was captured by military forces. David and Austin discover that the plane is carrying a bomb full of nerve gas to be released on Washington, D.C. Got some executive decisions going on today, don't we? (laughs) Yes, sir. Take them all the way down. All right. Hmm. There's your first one. Executive decision. Going against... Next up, we have Taken. 2008. Thriller action, 1 hour, 33 minutes. Brian Mills, Liam Liam Neeson, a former government operative, is trying to reconnect with his daughter, Kim, Maggie Grace. Then his worst fears become real when, when sex slavers abduct 
Kim and her friends shortly after they arrive in Paris for vacation. With just four days until Kim will be auctioned off, Brian must call on every skill he learned in Black Ops to rescue her. Taken one, taken two, taken three, taken four. How many are there? How many drugs have you taken? <laughs> Which drugs haven't you taken? I don't know. Mm. Jesus. <laughs> Not the answer I thought. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Travis, you go first, but I just got one thing to say to you. Good luck. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, Topical. Actual there. Okay. I am going to go with Taken. Taken for Travis. Mm. This is um, somewhat tough, but I'm also going with Taken. Yeah, I got to go with Taken, but I'm worried that he's doing the rope dope mm-hmm. I think he is as well. I don't do rope dope yeah. so I just go with what's giving to me, mm-hmm. gentlemen. Mm-hmm. And uh, you all three go with Taken. All going for a sweep of the first one. (laughs) Which I can't believe. No way. That's so. Have you seen Executive Decision, Travis? I have. With Kurt Russell. And Steven Seagal dies in the first act. 58 for Taken. 64 for Executive Decision. Oh, that's sad. That's ridiculous. Good God. That's so racist. Hmm? I don't know. I just felt like that would be the appropriate answer to everything. That's your crutch. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. That's there your it crutch. Is. It's my shtick. Okay. So we're all tied. Nil, nil, nil. That's a low score for Take It. Take It was good. Yeah, it was a good movie. What the Come hell on. is that all about? Come on, man. I don't know. I don't make these. I just find them and mm-hmm. use them, and then you yell at me. Nah! Psych- psychopath. It's because the people from Rotten Tomatoes aren't here, and you are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the conduit. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just like this doll you yell at to get it all out. No. Like a punching bag. Well, we point to where we feel like Rotten Tomatoes has abused us. Okay. All right. We move on to the second pairing. Hmm. Car chases. Car chases. We go back to car chases for this one. Bullet, 1968. Mystery thriller. One hour, 54 minutes. Senator Walter Chick. Ch- Chalmers, Robert Vaughn, is aiming to take down mob boss Peter Ross, Vic Tabak, with the help of testimony from the criminal's hot head brother Johnny, Pat Ranella, who was pre- in protective company, who was in protective custody in San Francisco under the watch of police lieutenant Frank Bullitt, Steve McQueen. When a pair of mob hitmen enter the scene, Bullitt follows their trail through a maze of complications and double crosses. The thriller includes one of the most famous car chases ever filmed. Do you ever have a fast car? No. What kind of car do you have now? A Buick LeSabre. Got 67,000 miles on it and no no window. Why is that? I got shot out when I was at work <laughs> downtown. What kind of car did you have before that? A Chevy Malibu. I know it was a beautiful 1978, and every black guy in the city wanted to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad about 78 that. Chevy Malibu. Yeah, I would probably also yeah. try to buy that. After no, I watched. I watched it happen. Oh, okay, yeah. Once a week uh, when he had it. It's a beautiful That's car. Awesome. It's a beautiful <laughs> car. <laughs> All right, bullet's your first one. Going against? Next up, we have Repo Man. I saw this in the theater. 1984, fantasy, comedy, one hour, 35 minutes. After being fired from his job, Los Angeles slacker and punk rocker Otto, Emilio Estevez, lands a gig working for an eccentric repossession agent named Bud, Harry Dean Stanton. At first, Otto's reluctant to work as a Repo Man, but he grows to love the fast-paced job. After learning of of a Chevy Malibu that has been given a $20,000 price tag, Otto embarks on a quest to find the car with the beautiful Leela, Olivia Burr. Fresh, who claims the trunk's contents are otherworldly. Emilio! Emilio! All right. Repo Man versus Bullet. Do you feel the theme here? I mean, the mm-hmm. obvious choice has got to mm-hmm. be Bullet, you know, but mm-hmm. we got to stand together, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's calling for unity. What is this, Big Brother? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Survivor here? What are you doing? Yeah, we're forming alliances. Against <laughs> yeah. you. I feel like there's going to be a uh, yeah, what's heel going turn. On here? <laughs> Who's going to double alli- cross who? <laughs> forming alliances did a trivia contest. How That's did this <laughs> happen? I love it. I guess this is just right, our speak, nature. Vote your conscience. All right. All right. I'm going. Uh, I'm going bullet. Going with bullet. Uh, uh, I'll just go with repo man. No, you said going with bullet. That wasn't a question. That was a statement. So you can oh, go with going with bullet. <laughs> I'm going. Yeah. No, we'll he, go said, with... he said repo, man. Okay, 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 okay. All right. What do you got, Dr. I'm going with bullet. So, Chris, you're going with? I'm, I'm going with repo, man. I guess I'm the rat. Okay. Dr. Ed, Travis. They're thrown down their headsets. I'm a... Mm. I crossed the picket line. <laughs> We're gonna so hate me, everybody. <laughs> Bullet, highly rated movie. A ninety-seven. 
<laughs> Repo Man. No, a no. Ninety-eight. No, a ninety-eight for I mean, Repo Man. I mean, don't you know, Emilio Estevez? Come on, I mean, <laughs> nothing that. Emilio. You ever seen Young Gun? Oh yeah, I love that growing <laughs> up. Billy the Kid. Travis is really upset. <laughs> it's literally one of the best action films of of any generation. What about Repo Man? And it is Harry Dean Stanton, bro. Oh my God! I, I feel believe. guilty for having crossed the picket you should. line. You should feel ashamed. Yeah, you're you a scab. <laughs> you are a scab. You son of a bitch. It was that that Union Hall on Hampton where they always oh, got the big blow up rat out front. Oh. Yeah, it's still the there. People protesting. Yeah. I saw it yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I saw it the other day as well. <laughs> they are relentless. They are look. Don't ever get on the bad side of a union. Boy, oh mm. boy. We could do that outside the Rotten Tomatoes office. That's oh. what we're going to do. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Start kidnapping their employees. Yeah, I don't care what the next movies are. I'm, I'm voting. I'm with you. Yeah. I'm know. with you. Yeah. Man. Whatever, man. What, 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 what movie you got next? Stick Come on, man. We're going to march on this. Get, it, get this over yes, with. Let's get, get, yeah, man. We're going to march on this. Uh, Dr. <laughs> me and Dr. Dr. Ed and I are going to shut down a couple of highways at this rate. Let's keep it moving. Real quick. Shut down Piazza Emo. Yeah. Triangle Assassin says that I'm the Takashi Six Nine of the show. <laughs> I've rolled, I've rolled on everybody. Rolled and then uh, Steve in Des Moines has a very serious question. For, is it, I sorry to deviate from the the, uh, the segment, but Doctor Ed, what's a battle hawk? <laughs> a battle hawk. <laughs> You're a veterinarian. You're a man of science. I what's am. a battle hawk? The new XFL team or the St. Louis Battle Hawks? Oh gosh. And uh, Steve in Des Moines needs to know the <laughs> classification of said animal. Mythical. I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> Mythicus. Uh, yeah. Avianus. Uh huh. Avianus Mythicus. Battleus. There it is. There it is. Avianus Battleus. Yeah. Uh, hate to remind everyone, I'm up. I'm up one nothing. Okay, you are, cause you turned on everyone. Mm -hmm. You son of a bitch. Chris Kashi six nine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, final pairing. Movie set on an island. Can Chris <coughs> or can uh, who? Uh, let's do this. Who should guess first when we? present these i got it okay we'll go with that here's your first one i still know what you did last summer 1998 slasher teen one hour 41 minutes a year after killing vengeful hit and run victim ben willis ben wills muse watson who gutted her friends gutted her friends with an iron hook college student julie james jennifer love hewitt is still shaken by the experience when her roommate carla brandy wins a vacation for four to the bahamas she plans to bring along her boyfriend tyrell mock Mackay Pfeiffer. Mackay Pfeiffer. Attractive Will, Matthew Settle, and Julie. Yeah, yeah, get that? She's bringing her boyfriend, Attractive Will, and Julie. At the resort, Julie starts receiving threats, no, threatening notes and realizes Ben is still alive. Okay, there's your first one. I still know what you did last summer. It was big for the uh, Farmington uh, movie-going uh -huh. scene. Yeah, at 14 to go see that. Here we go with your second. Six Days, Seven Nights, 1998. Action Romance, one hour, 42 minutes. In the South Pacific island of Mac Makati, career-driven magazine editor Robin, Robin Monroe and Het Heche is on a week-long vacation getaway with her boyfriend, Frank Martin, David Schwimmer. A work assignment in neighboring Tahiti requires Robin to hire a cargo plane piloted by the ki cantankerous Quinn Harris, Harrison Ford. But when a powerful storm forces Quinn to make an emergency landing on a nearby deserted island, the dissimilar pair learn to set aside their differences in order to find rescue. I hear they didn't get along. It seems like a bad pairing, doesn't it? Well, it's bad pairing with her and uh, oh, what's her name Ellen DeGeneres too that didn't work out all right I was actually on uh, the island of Kauai when they were filming that really really yeah. oh, it was a Harrison know. Ford sighting nice oh, I would love to meet Harrison Ford shocker Harrison Ford having to make a crash landing right oh come <laughs> on it's Han Solo preview, bro. A preview of coming attractions yes yeah. <laughs> at least I was on the golf course this time <laughs> I didn't kill my wife <laughs> I don't care. That's a great line. That's a great, it's got to be top five line in cinematic history, great right? Line. Tommy Lee Jones, the ultimate, I don't care. Yeah, good twang and everything. Doing everything. That was good. Oh, <laughs> <That was> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Six days, seven nights First, I still know what you did last summer. Chris, you go first. <sighs> I think you're okie dokie this again. I'm going six days, seven nights. And I, there's like a double okie doke going on. Six days, seven nights. Okay. Travis, how do you want to vote? Let's, <laughs> let's talk this over. <laughs> the 
is it? When did this happen? <laughs> Let's go the opposite movie. All right. I really was leaning that way just because I don't trust Gardner anymore. Mm. I still know what you did last yeah. summer yes. for yeah. both of you? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, both of you for the tie. <laughs> All right. I still know what you did last summer, a seven. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I'm Appropriate though. I mean, yeah. Six days, seven nights, a thirty-six. Mm. Uh, yeah. That's right. Because I know film. <laughs> a seven. Well, I see Ooh. what you two were doing after the show last today. That's fine if that's how it's, it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, reviewing these. Yeah. Do you uh, want the uh, tiebreaker? Yeah, yeah you might as well us. for yeah. your maybe salvage a little bit All of right. dignity here. Oh man. <laughs> Damn. Mm. Here's the tiebreaker. And for the tiebreaker, Eddie the Eagle, 2016, drama, sport, one hour, 46 minutes. Cut from the Olympic ski team, British athlete Michael Eddie Edwards, Taryn Egerton, travels to Germany to test his skills at ski jumping. Fate leads him to Bronson Peary. Hugh Jackman, a former ski jumper who now works as a snowplow driver, expresses, expressed by Edwards, wait a minute. Oh, impressed by Edward's spirit and determination, Peary agrees to train the young underdog. Despite an entire nation counting on a, counting him out, Eddie's never-say-die attitude takes him all the way to the historic and improbable showing at the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary, Alberta. This takes place on some powder. Where's the best powder you've ever had? Banff, Canada. Back in my skiing days. I mean the other oh, powder. Oh, best? Oh, probably back in the 70s, for crying out loud. Where? In Chicago. It was good while it lasts. Well, then I've got to go to the bathroom now. You mind? See ya. I'm up. All mm. right. Eddie the Eagle. Who wants to go first? Closest to the actual score. Closest to the actual score. Eddie the Eagle feels like it is uh, um, a wet dream for a critic who works for Rotten Tomatoes. So I'm going 89. 89 for Travis. Dr. Ed. I'm going just the opposite. I'm going hmm. 30. Okay. 30 for Dr. Ed. <sighs> 93. 93 for Chris. Eddie the Eagle is an 82. 82. It's a, it's a tough win, but a win nonetheless. And uh, I'd like to apologize to my union brothers for crossing the picket line. Boo! Of the Scab! 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 Boo! Wow. Huh. That'll do it for Hillside Animal <laughs> Hospitals. Forever, <laughs> right? <laughs> Doctor, I'm done, guys. I've got dogs, kind of this. On now, film. dogs on film. Colon survivor. <laughs> survivor. <laughs> yeah, right. The team of uh, Doctor Ed and Travis Terrell. Uh, don't forget Hillside Animal Hospital, full service veterinary medical facility located uh, very conveniently near uh, Highways 40 and 44. Hillside Hospital. Dot net for more information. I have another blood drive coming up. I got a notification uh, coming up in the next couple weeks. I know there's been shortages, uh, so be sure to check out Hillside Animal Hospital's Facebook page as they'll announce that. I've given blood twice in the last few months. It's super simple. Um, I don't get the uh, everybody's like, oh, my day's ruined. I don't know. I'm fine afterwards, okay. and uh, and it's it's a, a very helpful thing to do. So, uh, Doctor Ed, that's always important to him. So you guys uh, go check that out. Support Doctor Ed and support the Red Cross. Uh, to get blood to more people in the area and around the region. Uh, did we discuss how – let's all make some predictions real quick. Dr. Ed, you're big into sports. Travis, you're a former professional athlete, Thank essentially. You. Um, where do the Cardinals end up? couple games left, 19-inning uh, crazy game last night after another gem from your boy Flaherty. Travis, he's got that dog in him. Uh, what do we think happens with the Cardinals? Are they going to win the division? Squeak in with they get a wild card berth no matter what. Where do they end up? I think the Cardinals lose the division. And the Cardinals will get in obviously as a wild card because they've already clinched that. But I think the Cardinals lose the division. And the only reason I say that is because the Cardinals schedule uh, I think is just much harder than the Brewers the last four games. The Diamondbacks uh, are, are a 500 team. They're a winning team, uh, so they're going to be very tough to beat tonight. Uh, clearly the Brewers, <laughs> they have the Reds, I think, uh, for tonight and then tomorrow. And then the Cardinals have the Cubs this weekend, who I think would love to p offer some payback after the massacre in Wrigley. So I think it's going to be a little bit harder for the Cardinals to clinch the division. Um, so I'm going with the Brewers winning it. I think, unfortunately, it's going to be an ugly collapse. I think, th I think they'll hold on. Okay. I do. I think. Yeah, they'll yeah. hold on, guaranteed. 
to win simple. the division. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's my thoughts. So, the know. schedule can mean something, but a team is going to lose a game in there. That's how it works. Nationals did clinch a spot. The so Cardinals need two wins, basically. That's all yeah. they need out of the remaining games. And the Brewers could get caught slipping. Yeah, all, you have to, all they have to do is lose once, and it's, to me it's done. It would be very <laughs> it would be very defeatist to think that the Cardinals could go from on the edge of winning the division to being the away team in the wild card game. Yeah. Which is technically possible. Mm-hmm. With, the, this, with this, the Nationals, I don't lie, I, and I've, I've, like I've, I've been more than happy to eat crow and Jack Flaherty. He's been phenomenal. The pitching has been very good. That offense, man, is just so wildly inconsistent, and it's going to really, it's, it's, yeah. There's no excuse for losing in a 19 inning game to a Diamondback team that the previous night you just eliminated from the playoffs, and to get two runs in 19 innings, that is. That's not that good, but. Here's the thing I think people miss. I don't understand this, too, because people watch baseball for a while, and they should be able to understand this. You can look at the schedule only so much, but within a baseball game, there's so many games within a season that you're going to lose a lot of games that you probably shouldn't. True. It just happens. True. So you can like, oh, look at the schedule down the road. They're going. People are still, you know how hard it is to sweep series? Very difficult. Like it doesn't happen very often. No, it does not. Um, so to me, it's all all the Brewers need to do is lose one. Okay. Not, they'll lose at least one game, and then Cards just need two, maybe. If the Brewers lose more, then who the hell knows? Who do the That's Brewers have after this weekend? I don't know. Okay, find out. Yeah. But I am very, but like uh, I will say this: I think Schultz does deserve to be manager of the year. I think this team has overperformed. 90 wins. I thought it was going to be a struggle to to get to 85, 86, and they they are already at 90. So I will say this team has absolutely exceeded my expectations. And to that, I think winning the division would be a huge achievement, considering where this team was a couple months ago. I don't see them going further than that. And again, that's because I just think there are other teams currently in the National League that are just better. I think the Braves are better. I think the Dodgers are better. And I just think this team, despite the amazing pitching, just does not have the offense that would give me comfort that they could really make some noise in the playoffs. You guys want to hear the schedule? Yeah. You got the Reds today, Mm -hmm. Reds tomorrow, Mm -hmm. and then closing it out with three games with the Rockies. Is it in Colorado or Milwaukee? Let's see. If it's in Colorado, you're like, yeah, I'm with Gardner. I like your chances of them losing at least one there. Brewers at Rockies. Yeah. I yeah, so you would think the Rockies should like be able to steal one for, of those games. For a loss, it, all it takes is one inning. Yeah, especially as we saw of, twice yeah. last night. It's yeah, just like we saw last night. Yeah. It's how baseball goes. But yeah, I like I said, I'm. I, and I, but this isn't to knock what the Cardinals have done. And like I said, I'm like you can line up the times that I've said that this team was dead in the water and that they had no business being where they were, and they have proven me wrong. Dakota Hudson's looked great. Jack, of course, has looked amazing. Yachty has turned back the hands of time. So has Wainwright. I, I uh, this team has been good. Uh, they have been good this season. And ninety wins. I did not see that. I did not. I, if you told me at the beginning of the season, especially back in May, that this will be a ninety win team, I would have asked you to seek help. So there you go. Okay. If you're the Cubs, do you wanna do you wanna stick it on them? Try? I would if that it, look that would be my motivation. But the thing is, who's going to be available? I don't know if Chris Bryant's going to be available. I don't know if Rizzo's going to be available. I don't know if Bias is going to be available. Right. That's so if point, you, don't, if you, you don't have those guys available, then and I think did Hendricks go last night? Kendricks, excuse me, go last night. I feel like he did. Do we? If we? I, th- I think he has. If he has one more start against the Cardinals, I'd be a little bit. Oh boy, because he's so very to... good against the Cardinals, but he's terrible on the road. He's well, he's he's a little bit uh, below average on the road. Let me just say. Uh, away from Wrigley, so so we got Michael Walker today, Dakota Hudson. No, oh, we got Walker today. Sweet God, oh boy, he pitched well his last time. Out. No, he didn't. Four innings, one run. Ah, uh, that because the Cubs just uh, that was not a great outing. Dakota Hudson. He Dakota got he got he got, he got he got bailed out by great, some. But it wasn't. Yeah, he got he got bailed out. Some some awesome defense bailed his ass out. But yeah, he awesome was not defense good. last night. Nineteen innings, no error. He said, to, uh, ooh, "Walk it a day, oh boy." Dakota no, Hudson. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying you should trust him, but I yeah. did say it was a terrible outing last time. It was a little bit of a misnomer. Miles Michaelis, Saturday, yeah. and then up in the air, probably depending on what's at stake for Sunday. Which is, yeah, Cardinals need to definitely win today. 
This may be the. This is this is a the, must win? This is the must win. <laughs> do you want to win the division? Was last you don't night. Have to win today to win the division. Yes, you do. That's stupid. Yes, you do. It's just okay. there's, it's, it's, right. like mathematically, it's not even true. Okay. <laughs> You're gonna accuse Travis of letting his emotions run wild. <laughs> Magic Johnson wouldn't have let it get this oh, close. Oh, there Magic it is. Magic wouldn't have let it get this close, Doctor. He wouldn't yeah. have because he'd have thirty wins, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Fair. Uh, guys, we've encouraged you to uh, support Doctor Ed and Hillside Animal Hospital. Let's give him a round of applause as he doesn't have to sit through the rest of the show here with us. We got a couple more things to hit. We'll get Doctor Ed out of here. Super quick break. Thank you again, Dr. Ed. Always love having yep. you in. We'll look forward to having you back next week. Yep, I'll be here. All right. We'll see Dr. Ed then. Quick break, super quick break, and we'll be right back. We are live, live, live. We are live, live, live. We are live, live, live. live. We are live. Welcome back, and thank you to Dr. Ed, everybody. We appreciate him coming in. He's from Hillside Animal Hospital. Take your animals there. Also, big thank you to our friends at Getaway Carts. Getawaycarts.com for more information on how you can get customized golf carts right here in the St. Louis area. We always appreciate their support. I told you about Tech Electronics helping us out, but always check out Tech Electronics dot com for more information everybody travis we've got make it racist coming up but i know you have uh some tumescence that you need to take care of uh what's going on in your world that you'd like to report fun afternoon yesterday in america <laughs> okay. boys and girls all right yesterday we did learn that the democrats in the house are moving forward with an impeachment query inquiry if you will nancy pelosi um finally officially announced that based on uh, a whistleblower's complaint about a conversation, multiple conversations the President of the United States has had with the Ukraine government in regards to information on Joe and Hunter Biden and Hunter Biden's businesses in the Ukraine. Based on those conversations, this particular whistleblower decided to bring it to the attention of the Director of the National Intelligence. So the Director of National Intelligence, of course, brought it forth to the White House the White House then legally got in touch with the Department of Justice and decided that they were going to put this report in a drawer, which, of course, uh, violates federal law. When there is a whistleblower complaint, you must make it public. The White House decided that they weren't going to do that. And so uh, this impeachment inquiry now put forth by the Democrats in the House. Can we change the name of this, by the way? We need to keep up with... The changing words of today's kids and the culture okay. and involve them in this. Okay. I am proposing that we call it a formal cancel inquiry. Okay. So instead of impeachment, cancel. Cancel. We're familiar with, with cancel, cancel culture. culture. Okay. I say we call it a formal cancel. Inquiry. I like that. An FCI, if yeah. you will. So I think that involves the youth in the process. It <laughs> does. It does. And we sound cooler when we say <laughs> it, it does. too. It does. I like that. So, so the inquiry is not even the formal impeachment process. It's an inquiry to determine whether or not the impeachment process should move forward. Uh, Nancy Pelosi announced that during a press conference yesterday afternoon, uh, to which, of course, as many who have followed him over the last three and a half years, President Trump uh, naturally denied, changed the story, denied and lied, and then changed the story once again. And so the president announced that he was going to release the transcript uh, in regards to the, uh, this conversation, a ah, conversation. Well, of course, there were multiple conversations, and the thing that the public, or at least in this particular case, the Democrats want to see is the actual complaint from the whistleblower. Now, it was voted on in the Senate yesterday that they, too, want to see the formal inquiry they want to see the formal complaint from the whistleblower and it was also announced as well that said whistleblower was set and ready to testify and give information to the intelligence committee this week uh, what day that will take place we're not officially sure we'll probably maybe get some word out of that <clears throat> later today but it was announced this morning some of the transcript in regards to the conversation apparently the president of the united states had with the ukraine government 
and um, so so I can be as objective as possible. Let me make sure I'm saying the the information correct. According to the transcript, President Donald Trump told Ukraine's president that a lot of people want to find out about former President Joe Biden's family's activities in Ukraine and asked him to be in touch with his attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and Attorney General Bill Barr. According to a briefing for correspondence about the contents of the July 25th phone call on Wednesday, the Justice Department, the conversation raised concerns by a whistleblower that Trump may have broken the law by asking the foreign government of Ukraine to help against potential election rival. But the Justice Department concluded that based on the evidence that's available, prosecutors did not and could not make a make out a criminal campaign finance violation under the law. A thing of value under discussion has to be in some quantifiable, uh, I guess, point of view. And the Justice Department couldn't find that here. Even so, the official's account of the phone conversation confirms the kernel of the story that has brought the Washington to a fever pitch is that the American president asked the Ukrainian president for help with political ammunition against his potential 2020 election mm -hmm. rival. So we have a smoking gun, what appears to at least be a smoking gun. We I don't even know how to shoot a gun. That's very true. I <laughs> doubt if he does. Then, of course, we heard the report that last week or at least a week before that phone call took place, the United States government was going to withhold foreign aid to Ukraine. Foreign aid, of course, that it was already voted on through Congress that Ukraine was supposed to get anyway. Mm -hmm. So now you have multiple smoking guns, Chris. So here's the situation where the Democrats for the past handful of months have been basically going back and forth about whether or not they wanted to impeach this president based on the Mueller report. It looked as if despite there being a majority in the House wanting to go forward with those impeachment process, that the, the bigwigs, the Pelosi's, the Adam Schiff's were very reluctant to go forward when it came to impeachment. But it appears because of this complaint and because of the withholding of $400 million in foreign aid to Ukraine, and now, of course, sending over your personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, to speak for the United States government in regards to this so-called investigation, it appears that the Democrats have said, we have no choice. We have to move forward with an inquiry to determine whether or not the president of the United States indeed tried to engage in a quid pro quo. Truth isn't truth. Yeah, truth isn't truth. So, Chris, I, I don't, I, everybody knows my political leanings, but I think at the end of the day, I don't Fake think this has anything to do with politics. I think this has to do with the rule of law. I think this has to do indeed with democracy. And I know it's something that we often brag about as a society about how amazing our democracy is. Then what better opportunity to display how amazing our democracy is, is to go through a transparent process to determine whether or not the United States actually engaged in digging up information on a political rival Joe Biden, former vice president, nonetheless. Trav does have indeed an impeachment boner. Does this make me happy? Absolutely, because I think he's a piece of shit. That's not the point of this inquiry, though. The point of the inquiry is that the president of the United States attempted to get some form of incriminating information on who he thinks is going to be his political rival in the upcoming 2020 election. And in doing so, he used the mechanisms of the United States government to pressure a government to do his dirty bidding. And so I don't think it's an issue of politics. It's an issue of what's right and what's wrong. Do you believe the president of the United States should have that power, that ability to use resources, our resources, taxpayer dollars, to essentially blackmail a foreign government to get dirty information on a political opponent? If you say yes, then hey, Get the hell out of this country. Go hang out in Cuba. Hey. But if you are a, an American who loves red, white, and blue, eagles, liberty, and freedom and happiness, you should be rooting on this impeachment. And you, too, can have an impeachment boner. Oh, How's yours? Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty thick, if you will. Mm. Pretty I'm, thick. I'm not going to play that this probably hasn't happened multiple times in the past or, I mean, very recently, whatever. Um but here would be my just short, swift answer. If you're not good enough to uh, keep it out of my uh, purview or your peers' purview, well then, yeah, you should be punished for it. I think, and here's my... I, I, that's what I, I feel like I have to say that because I feel stupid saying one person or particular... And maybe he is. Maybe he's the only person who's ever done this. I highly doubt it. I very would bet everything that he's not. 
maybe it's just this way, but if you're not good enough, if you're going to do sneaky shit and you're going to do bad shit, which I think all levels of government is involved in some sort of something like that, then yeah, then you get to face the, uh, then you get to, then you have to do the dance that they tell you to do because I don't care if other people have done it. It didn't get brought to the light like this and it did. And if this is getting brought to the light, then yeah, they should inquire into it more. I think at another day that, you, I mean, it's, do you do nothing? Do we really do nothing? And not even to that, I think, I was thinking about this on my drive-in. I was oh. thinking about how the police officer in Florida arrested the six-year-old for yeah. a tantrum. Uh, I re, I, we've seen multiple stories about cities putting spikes on park benches to discourage homeless people. From they did that to my benches. Right. And we've, we've seen even school districts go out of their You'd way. You'd see my white privilege. Oh, boy. I bet. I bet. Especially you would. Why would you ruin also beautiful park benches like that? I know. And then we've also seen school districts go to the lengths of humiliating young students when they have a lunch debt. So it seems like when something is wrong, we're willing to go the extra mile to bring about a punishment, to show that there should be consequences for said actions. We're willing to do that to children. We're willing to do that to the poor. But when an individual, now mind you, this wasn't AOC or Rachel Maddow coming forward. This was a government official inside the Trump administration. Who is it? Coming for who I think it is. The fun rumor is John Bolton, but I don't think that's him. Here's my question. But is the this fact unprecedented? Is, but here's my thing. Is Presidented? I, I, I think I like is, that. are we saying now that we're okay with doing nothing when a government when employee it's, it's comes forward there. and a government employee comes forward and issued a formal, he issued yeah. a formal whistleblower complaint. Yeah. So if it wasn't that big of a deal, then why are you stuffing it under a table? If it truly was going to investigate the former vice president and his son, why are you sending your personal attorney? Who are you talking to? No, I'm saying in yeah, general, okay. my, my point is that we can't just go... Well, other people have done this, or we can't just simply go shrug and do nothing. I've heard some of you, my Democratic friends, say, I don't know if this is going to be a good thing politically well, it, it for the Democrat. To, you have to do yeah, something. You have to, but, if you have to see, but you have to see if it's credible and all that stuff. You're saying it's worth the time to see if it is credible. I think we know it's credible. To well, th no, this no, this no, idea no. that we think it's not credible, well, I no, think no, it's there's silly. A, there's a process that you must yeah, be no, involved no, uh, in. Uh, well, uh, I'll say this. It is credible simply because... The president said so himself. <laughs> credible, cred cred credible in the fact that like you need to, we need to go through the proper but, but procedures. Here's my thing. Of course. Well, right. So here's my question then to that. My question is to that is... <laughs> Rudy Giuliani did whatever oh. he did last time. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. He said, I, he said I didn't get involved until the State Department told me to and he's holding up his cell phone yelling. Mm. <laughs> but my thing to that, you so say that, whether or not it's credible... <laughs> Why are we giving it'd be it'd have been different if we were talking about a person who has never ever had a documented history of corruption in their life? Why are we giving two individuals like Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump the benefit of the doubt? Why are we so willing who's, to talk about we, no what yeah. I'm saying people in general as far well, as they have a, what I'm saying is we're sitting up here saying that the process, like, we need to it, investigate. You're yelling at no one. But I'm this saying, is a complete fucking straw man. I, there's no, there's no straw then man. Don't say we. There is. No, I, there's. I, I'll, there are they're people. They're doing something. They brought a formal inquiry. I, You're acting like nothing is happening. Prior to that, nothing was happening, Gardner. Of course, because they were looking to get things. Gartner, there was nothing happening prior to that. There was literally a two-year investigation. An investigation. No, they did conclude an investigation, and nothing was going to be done. Okay, but we're talking about this case so in I'm, particular. So that's what I'm right? trying to point out there. But, but you're, you're I'm just, talking about, no, I'm saying in general. Well, you're not I'm making not talk, sense. Put, let me put it this way. I'm not talking about Chris and Gartner. Is that okay? Can I no, at least say that? No, I'm trying no, to not. say. I don't know who you're talking to I, or I about. I'm speaking in generalities. I'm talking about the idea of where we are. I'm talking about the context of the actual situation. What I'm saying is that we have two individuals that have a documented history of corruption. Okay. And so I'm saying that the idea that we wouldn't want to follow that trail yes. would seem silly so my point is 
they had to do something. That's what I'm trying to illustrate. They had to do something. This idea that, uh, I don't know whether it's not necessary. That conversation has taken place in Democratic circles, whether or not to go forward with any formal inquiry in regards to the potential illegal behavior of this president. And my thing is, we already know that they have a history of participating in illegal activity. So the idea that you would struggle going forward is still silly to me. It shouldn't have been a struggle. It should have been something that we knew right away as soon as the formal complaint came forward that the investigation shouldn't begin. It should not have been a situation where you needed to have pressure or you needed AOC to go on Twitter or you needed Elizabeth Warren to come forward. It was a clear violation. So let's go ahead and stop pussyfooting around this. Let's get to the action and let's get this son of a bitch out of here. There you go. There, that's what I was trying to get to. If you guys yep. just allow me no, to tell you, you were no, rambling. No, no, you I were wasn't rambling. rambling. You yes. guys were interrupting me and not letting me finish my point. There was no interruption. It was. <laughs> Fact of the matter. You were wandering, and I wanted <laughs> I, I wanted you I wanted you to say what you just said there. Thank you. Okay. What you just said there was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Okay? okay? That's what I'm saying. Can we say that? At the end of the day. Good job. If we're putting six-year-olds in jail, we definitely should absolutely put this okay. president oh. in jail. I think you, I did, think, did the six-year-old I just thought you got sidetracked for a moment. I, I was know. trying I'm to... I'm sorry. Thank you. When, look, I wanted you to yell like that. This is how boners work. You lose blood going to your okay, head. Okay. Come on. All right. Fact of the matter is USA. That's all I got to say, man. If you love America, you should be all game for this. Chris, you love America, don't you? Do you love America? Who is she? Where she work? You son of a bitch. Where would I know her from? So, yes. Who had the character America in a movie? Wasn't there an America? I think so. Mer Amerigo Vespucci uh, traveled here from or Europe. Or is that a TV show? I mean, I, I think, and here's also the fun thing about this. Mm. That we're still treating Rudy Giuliani like a serious person. I mean, he's the lawyer when I say for the, we, when I say we, when I say we, States. when I say, well, it, I don't think anyone this. I was going to say, like, he, the they're treating president. him as a guest who's going to say things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also that too. Also that too. They know the media knows he's going to talk. So they just because you have a guest on does not mean you take them serious. But if you have a guest on that you know is going to maybe. Give you a few sound bites. Yes. Rudy Giuliani might be that person right now. Yes. Uh, who holds his phone up and screaming and then calls the other panelists idiots and morons. Oh, and then, God. <laughs> then mm -hmm. you go and look at This is them. bad. <laughs> like, I, th I think this is like, and I think that it's, and I'm not saying that in I mean, order for you to care. I will you need say to this. Are you shocked that Rudy Giuliani and and Donald Trump are involved in extortion. No, not at all. <laughs> but that's my point. Like that's like the idea that that like and that's and that that takes where we are in in this situation. And I, I know I'm not saying that in order for you to care, you have to run out of here and scream and yell like I do with nope. your hair on fire. You don't have to do all that. But I think you have if you are a red blooded American, if you breathe basically the law and you go through your life every day doing what you're supposed to do legally here's, you should be absolutely outraged right now you have to problem. be outraged you have to if you're not outraged at this then you just i honestly don't believe you have ever cared well that that's what you need to focus on because they didn't and that's why the virtue signaling thing no matter if you're doing it because True. you're act like, acting like you're a male feminist and you're just really trying to talk to chicks like uh, Bernie Sanders and you act like you cared about what point. someone from your other from the side of the, the political spectrum that you're not on you act that they're well no we have to follow the rules that's where unfortunately we're all mistaken they didn't ever care and that's what's most apparent in Absolutely. these situations and that's what you'll continue to see and that's why it's so disturbing that that stuff is widely accepted, which leads to apathy, which leads and to I think, which I think, leads to atrophy. And I think apathy is what ultimately motivated uh, a person like Nancy Pelosi not to move forward with an initial inquiry. And I think that is again incredibly dangerous. And I think it I, is. It, and and it's and then I I just I I again what I understand that found, there's so much bullshit going on. What they have found is a simpler issue. Very simple. You can almost it's a not straight the line. Report. Yes. It's here. It is. Here it is. Uh, we don't have to try and explain this to people. It right. doesn't get muddied. They'll try to muddy it. Of course there, they yeah, will. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And you know what? It's, it's actually a fascinating time, I think, personally, because, you know, there's the historians on Twitter that will be able to break down for you if you pay attention similarities into what 
Nixon did with Watergate right. and releasing transcripts right. and how they, I mean, look, we, we know the guy put a Sharpie to a weatherman. <laughs> <laughs> so like, he, and then comparing and contrasting how Watergate went down, even with releasing information right. there and what eventually, and like, it's been, the point has been made over and over by like Kevin Cruz, the, the Princeton historian, mm-hmm. who I like to follow on Twitter. Very good historian. And a lot of people do. Mm-hmm. Um, Even his like, Look, you look at the ratings for Nixon and people like that, when they started the inquiry, and he was doing well. He right. was fine. But what happens through an inquiry is you find, you have more of an ability to find things. Right. You get that ability, and then things come out. Right. And so, like, you kind of learn things along the right. way. And I think and that's, it, imp- and I think, and to your point. So I, I, I actually look forward to that. And it's, uh, and, and it's necessary, right? I would say it's necessary. I, again, I think it's the more we know about how our government works, the better. I think that's a, I think that's a great thing. I think if you yeah. now, and it's going to be ugly, it's going to be confusing at times. Yeah. But I think the more we go about this process in regards to transparency, the more we can begin to hold the people that we go to the polls every two to four years to elect accountable. And the, the idea that the only way you can remedy this is through an election. Look, here in Missouri, we're a perfect example. We've seen it with our county executive. We've seen it with our governor. So this idea that we have to wait until the end of their term in order to let them get out of office, yeah. we've seen, we've had two incidents in the last two years of major political officials doing things that are incredibly corrupt, and we, the people using our voices, our means, our resources to force them out of office. Yeah. Real investigations happened, and when they did, it exposed the culture, exposed the system. So I think the yeah. idea that an impeachment inquiry again um is maybe a bridge too far for formal some folks cancel inquiry, a please. formal cancel inquiry and again for some folks and mostly those in the other side of the aisle i think that's silly because we've seen it here with a democrat with a republican that corruption indeed does exist on both sides and when it does it should be called out and they should be held accountable and if you live here you should already know that's important. You would you really want Greiden still in office right now? Can you imagine that? Well, content wise, yeah. Yeah, well, that's very okay. true. So Thank you. That's good. My I think, goal I think is, that an um, overall thing to sell. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I had a tweet I wanted to read just because I thought it was funny. Uh-huh. And since Travis is a New Yorker, maybe he'll love this uh-huh. too. Uh, this is from Gary Legum. An entire presidency teetering because a couple of outer borough goombas are punching above their weight and tried to shake down a foreign leader like he's the Brooklyn Land Commissioner. It is. It says, it like at least I've even said this before. At least Grimes was a seal. At least Grimes went to you know. Well, well, no, at least at least Josh Hawley can wear a suit. Don't you dare say that in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying is like you're hanging your hat, you're hanging your party, the future of your party on a guy that wanted to sleep with his daughter and a guy that married his second cousin. That's who you're hanging the future of your party on. <laughs> He was doing so good. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, who, that's your, that's your God. That's your hero. The guy went on Stern talking about his daughter's breast. Chris said, and his attorney Chris, married his second cousin. Chris said to your face what he normally would say to someone while having a beer while talking behind your back. He was doing so good. <laughs> It's true. He's back on the smack. <laughs> it's true. He's doing so good. Oh, I think what you ultimately need to... like hurt him inside a little. <laughs> doing so you ultimately good. need to remember that uh, we, you're dealing with humans, and then whenever you get a whole bunch of humans together, a bunch of goofy shit happens, and mm-hmm. ultimately humans don't like to be wrong. And when people that you chose end up being wrong, you will wait till the very last second where you can no longer... They have to be carted away in the jail cell locked with... With to to truly garner support, those are the people that are behind that person, and then ultimately you also need the people who don't like that person to to obviously think that it's even worth the trouble and time. That's why it's so difficult to get anything done. But this when it comes to these things, and we have someone who will he will check every single door to see if it's locked or unlocked. But even but even with but policy. even with that, like I said, Greitens, who I would say has a better resume than this president. Even his Republican members said that was enough. Stanger, even the Democratic oh. members. Even, now, obviously, they were had to be pressured and put into the corner, and there was a process. But ultimately, when yeah, truth became truth, something over? facts over facts, when it came present, people put aside. There wasn't a ton of Democrats running to Stanger. There wasn't a ton of Republicans after the fact running towards Greitens. It feels it's odd that 
Trump and Giuliani would be different because I feel like those individuals would have warranted more protection than yeah. what this president. But and again, how many people have tied themselves to this administration? A lot. A lot of people have. Very true. Very, Very true, Gardner. Very All true. right. Fun way to end the show. It's Chris Simmons, Travis <laughs> Terrell. He was doing so good. Uh, that's how it goes. <laughs> Don't trip over a light. Oh, uh, no, man. God, Big I thanks will. to all of our sponsors. Again, we're at Oktoberfest. We've got Flyover Comedy Festival coming over. We didn't even tell you about Happiest Hour. Happiest Hour, the headliner, Libby Higgins, this week. Free comedy, 6 o'clock. Be sure to check it out. Kate Barton, mm. Molly Ambergy, also on the bill. Gonna be a blast. Our friends at Jack Daniels mm. and Schlafly bring you specials for a great time. Specials at 4 in Sophie's Artist and Cocktail Lounge right here in the Dot Zach building. 6 p.m. free comedy. You're not going to want to miss it. It's uh, going to be a packed house tomorrow. We really enjoy putting this show on, so come out. I can us. feel his impeachment boner. Oh, no. Uh, for Travis and Gardner, who are now one, it's Chris Demon. We're back live at 8 a.m. tomorrow. We'll see you then. Peace!